Salutations friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I figured I'd share with you guys a little fragrance story time and I talked to you about um, some parts of my time when I worked in the industry, which is when I worked in the fragrance and cosmetic store. Uh, I keep referencing this over and over, the good and the bad. I figured I should just probably tell you guys about my experiences there. So, if you'd like to know um, about what got me into fragrances and my first taste of this whole fragrance community and practically world, then keep watching. <laughs> I'm going to start this off with a disclaimer, and it's not too much of a disclaimer. Um, when I started this job, I was 16. This was my first job. I'm going to be 33, so this was about 16, 17 years ago. All of my experiences at the time, I thought I was a good employee, I thought I was doing a good job, and I had no expectations or no experience as to what to do when it came into asking for time off or what was expected of me. Um, I pretty much thought I did a good job. There's going to be one or two um, people I'm going to complain about in this video, but do you understand that they were more experienced and not old, but older. They were about 30, 40 years old. So they had more experience in the workforce and I was very green. So although I'm coming at you from my experiences being upset at what some of these people did, I do understand completely that this was my first job and I probably definitely wasn't in the right a lot of times. But this entire video isn't going to be me bashing or me complaining or me whining. It's going to be talking about the good and the bad and some of the interesting experiences that I had. Okay, let's start off with the job. <laughs> um, I've talked about this before. I don't ever say what the store is because there's not that many in the States, but it was called Douglas Cosmetics. Um, it's a German-based company and they have a few in the States. I don't know if even the store that I opened what is still around. And when I say I opened the store, I was literally opening the store. We were the skeletal crew to open this store. I hung shelves, we did inventory, we did everything. Now because I was in high school at the time, I could only come after school, so a lot of the team building stuff that they did to really solidify the team, um, they did when I wasn't there. So I was kind of like the odd man out. So they would all come back and talk about all these team building exercises they did or all these classes or um, stuff that they learned and did together. And I always kind of felt left out, but I knew that I was, you know, 16 and that this was, you know, I was kind of more of the temp and they were more of the career. This is what they did. Everybody in that store had a background in the industry one way or the other. My manager used to be a makeup artist on movie sets. Um, everybody had worked in the cosmetic industry or the beauty industry as makeup artists or just behind counters for at least five to six years. It was almost a, the youngest was 21 and she had actually quit school, got a GED, and went and got um, a certificate to be a makeup artist. So she had actually worked in the industry a long time, even though she was very young at the time, or what I would consider very young for somebody that had a lot of experience. If you're unfamiliar with Douglas Cosmetics, it's very similar to a Sephora or to an Ulta, only it's a little bit more high-end, and they were known for having an extensive fragrance area. They had the entire Creed line, they had probably over a thousand bottles. Like, it was insane how many bottles they had of different fragrances. This is the first time I really experienced different fragrances in a different variety of price points, from $50 to $500. I learned more about niche brands and luxury brands and not just the standard um, the stuff I'd known, like Clinique Happy and Elizabeth Arden, although I do enjoy those fragrances, it was very eye-opening in a very positive way. Now, because I didn't have any experience in other jobs or in the cosmetic counter, they also had a skincare area where they sold Clarins and La Prairie, and also our cosmetic area sold Dior, Chanel, um, and whatever was hot at the time. This was around the time that hard candy was really expensive and really high-end and you could find in department stores. So that's where we would, we would sell hard candy, Tony and Tina, Urban Decay when it was just starting out. 
but we also again had Dior, Lancome, um, Chanel, and then the high end um, skincare and fragrance areas. Since I didn't have any certification or any experience with, we'll call it the color side, I was forbade from helping anybody unless it was to find them a specific color. Because Douglas had a very good return policy, they wanted to make sure that their customers got what they needed with the right expertise and experience from the right sales associate. So I was mostly the cashier and I was also the fragrance girl, which means if anyone had any questions about fragrances, if anybody needed any help in that area, that's where I went and that's where I got a lot of my training and I also got a lot of my passion and learned a lot. Um, from that as well. Now working in the fragrance area you guys have heard some of my stories um, and the the one that I think people most giggled over was the woman who would constantly come in and she I don't think she was rude I just think she was oblivious it didn't matter what you were doing who you were helping she always had a question and her question always took priority this is the one where the person um, accidentally bumped into an entire display of testers and they all crashed to the ground there's a little kid running around and the mother didn't care and I was picking up glass with my hands and completely drenched in like 10 different fragrances and this woman's like can you help me and I'm like ah, can you wait for me not to be covered in glass anyway on top of that the area I worked with was very affluent and I got some of these people and I don't have any issue. If you work for your money and you can afford it, spend it however you want. As long as you're not hurting anybody, it's your money. Go for it. But I mean, this is when I was 16 and I wasn't, you know, like my dad worked very hard. My mom worked very hard so I could have a really good life and I had a fantastic life. There are things that I always wanted, but I think unless you're a billionaire, there's always going to be things you want you don't get. And I also think that that helps build character. Um, to not get everything that you want, you know, because the world doesn't revolve around But you. I would have girls, 11, 12, come in and buy like two to three hundred dollar bottles of Creed. And like their sister would be like, I want one. And they'd be like, share with your sister. And they'd be like, no, I want my own. <laughs> and so they'd buy these like 10 and 11 and year olds, like two to three hundred dollar bottles of perfume. I had this uh, teenager come in because she wanted the really expensive La Prairie skincare cream. And everyone was telling her, this is not for your skin. You are young. You do not need this skin. The skin is for 40, 50, 60. And she's like, no, I need the best for my skin. And it's like, you know, she paid with daddy's credit card. That's what a lot of it was. It was um, kind of interesting to see how these people, these kids, live their lives, spent their money. Now, most of the time... They were very polite. There were some rude people, but I think no matter where you work, no matter what you do, there's going to be rude people. So for me, that's not where my gripes came from. My gripes came from other employees. Now, again, I was the bottom of the totem pole. I was 16 years old. My shift started at 3. School got out at 2.30. I class was 15 minutes away. So I would actually have my mom pick me up from school. I would change it to my uniform in the car. I would have my makeup on from high school because I wore it a specific way. I did a whole video of what I did in how I did my high school makeup. I would get there and like one of the employees there, I, I forget his name, I believe it was David. He was, um, it was a drag queen at night. He was wonderful, very sweet, very nice. Um, kind of took me under his wing. I'd come in, he'd see my makeup, he's like, no. <laughs> he'd pull me, he'd do my makeup, he'd show me how to do my makeup, um, and then I would go because we had to wear the product in the store and look presentable. My alternative wannabe mall goth punk rock makeup was not gonna cut it in a place that sold Chanel and Lancome and La Prairie. <laughs> so I did have to put on a more professional face of Everyone there was really, really nice, and it was really more of a learning opportunity. Although I wasn't allowed to make recommendations or put makeup on people, 
I was taught a lot of knowledge about the brands. If somebody had a question and somebody else was busy, we were always supposed to give the customers first priority, which is where I think that person who constantly always asks questions kind of got into the habit of knowing that if you ask a question whenever, we were supposed to give you an answer. However, we would hope that customers wouldn't butt in on other customers. So I was taught the basic knowledge of a lot of things that wouldn't so much hurt if I got it wrong. Like, now there was a woman who worked there named Wendy. Now this is 17 years. I don't think she's watching my videos anytime soon. Um, she was <clears throat> very professional, very good at her job, but she was very, very um, rude to me. <laughs> she never gave me any respect at all whatsoever. I would be late to work sometimes because of traffic or because my mom getting me from school would, it would take an extra five minutes so I would come in at 3.05 instead of 3 o'clock and my mom was a trooper for driving back and forth, back and forth to pick me up because I didn't have a car at the time. She was wonderful to do that and Wendy would constantly belittle me for being late saying I wasn't taking my job seriously and that I had to have more respect for the business and other people's times because she had to leave at three and I was constantly late and I was keeping time away from her kids and that if I couldn't keep this come back in time or make it in time that I should just leave and my manager knew that how I how I would come to work you know she knew that I literally left straight from school and I was in school I wasn't gonna leave school early to work for eight bucks an hour so she was like try not to do it very frequently at all costs don't but I understand you know 15 20 minutes late no good five minutes late I can understand but Wendy you know she wanted to leave which is fine I understand you work all day you want to go home someone's constantly late I understand that um, and that's not what got me. The got me was is the fact that she wasn't my boss whatsoever, but she micromanaged everything that I did. Um, there was a time where we were given a lot of testers and stuff in the beginning, but when representatives for the company started coming and we were supposed to get gratis, I always got gratis from fragrance or, you know, if somebody was like, okay, we'll give you bottles of perfume, you know, to try out and test. Uh, but here is also... Um, the beauty side of it, I she made sure, it was her mission to make sure I never got gratis. Even though it didn't affect her gratis. Never. <laughs> it wasn't like, here's a pool of money you guys have to spend. Divvy it up equally. It was always like, each one of you have $250 or $300 to spend is how it worked. We were allowed to pick things from the store. Um, or they would just come in and just give us each little packages. But, like, I got one package and she was livid. She's like, she doesn't deserve gratis. She doesn't do what we do. She doesn't work with color. She only does fragrance. She doesn't deserve this. And I was like, I don't understand. And David was like, would, he was friends with everyone. You know, he no one took sides with this. And if anyone took a side, they took Wendy's side. Because I was, you know, I understand. I was 16. I was the temp. Um, but they were all very nice. She was just the only one. <laughs> Um, and you know, and they were all like, well, you know, she doesn't work in color, but she is the cashier and people comment on her makeup and if they like the color lipstick that she wears, we can sell it to them and it helps. Here's the other thing. It didn't work on commission here. No commission. None. So there was absolutely no reason for any of this. It's not like I could like sell my lipstick and be like, oh, this is this color from Estee Lauder. This is this color from Dior. I'll grab it for you real quick. There was no commission. None. No commission. The only, and so I didn't understand why she was so against me getting gratis. So one day an Estee Lauder rep came in and he gave us all sheets to fill out for gratis. And it was around Christmas time and he was very nice and I even asked because I'd been denied gratis from a variety of different companies. Um, and I asked him because he handed me a sheet and I'm like, I'm just the cashier, do I get gratis? He's like, yeah, we'll give it to you, it doesn't matter, you're, you're here, of course we'll give you gratis. Um, and Wendy had off for like two days or whatever um, and she had come back and I was off the clock. I had been done with work, I only came in for a few hours, I wasn't closing, I was literally like, okay, I got, my mom's gonna be here in 10 minutes, I'll fill out the sheet and give it to my manager, and she saw me filling out the sheet, and she's like, what is that? 
And I'm like, this is the gratis sheet from Estee Lauder. I'm filling it out. There's nobody in the store, my, you know? And she's like, you're not allowed to have that. And she like storms in the back. And I was like, whatever. I fill it out, I turn it in. The next day, my manager's like, you know, Kristen, you really aren't allowed to have gratis. And I'm like, you know, I, I know that. And the Estee Lauder rep said it was okay. And you even knew I was filling out. And she said, well, Wendy, Wendy doesn't really think that you should. And we're training her to be a manager. And we really need, you know, and we kind of need to make sure that our team is strong and that there's no strife. And so we're just going to deny you this gratis. And I was, it wasn't that I was like being denied the gratis. It was like everyone said it was okay until Wendy threw a tantrum. And then it was like, no gratis for you. And I was like, ah. But it was just kind of like, but when I found out she was a manager, that's actually when I quit. I quit a few weeks ago. There's no way I was working underneath her. But it was like that mentality. It was like, ah. So she was this, like, she was the thorn in my side for this job. And, you know, there were little cards we had to fill out for newsletters. And we were supposed to write our names on it. And we didn't work for commission. We only, the only thing that they wanted us to do was to get 50 cards, uh, like, a month which wasn't too bad. And me being the cashier, you were supposed to ask. So I would constantly ask and I was being tracked too. And so I would always have 200, 300 because I was always asking, nobody else asked. And she saw me filling out the cards one day, you know, and I had a whole stack of people I'd spent hours asking. And she's like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm filling out cards. And we put our name. She's like, no, 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 this doesn't matter for you. You're taking, you're making everyone look bad. How dare you? And so she scratched out like, 50 names and wrote her name in and I think because I was already at a good enough number I was pissed off that she did that but my thought was is she had the audacity to just put her name in it's not like she didn't put anyone else who was working that day then I would be like well this sucks but okay but she just put her name in she didn't put David's name she didn't put the two other people who were working just hers and the thing is is they would bring the customers up to me because I was a cashier and they'd be like tell them about the newsletter and if they did that or if the person who came up to the counter was like oh they're talking to me about like a discount that I get with a newsletter I would be like I would write their the the person's name on it I would never write my name if it was even mentioned by somebody else but she was just so rude oh and I could go in and in and more things but I'm not going to because I don't want this to be like a bashing video but that was the negative side of it so I only worked there for about eight months um and I got another job <laughs> selling ice cream which was really fun but what I loved most about the job really was working and helping people find fragrances. It was my favorite thing, you guys. I loved that. I always loved helping people find things they want to buy. Um, it was always something I really enjoyed doing. I like selling things. Um, and again, this isn't me like being like, oh, I sell mattresses. It was like the journey to find their fragrances was always so much fun. I learned a lot about notes. I learned a lot about what I called scent stories, which is how a scent wears on the skin. Learned a lot about body chemistry because I was their test strip. I would have, at least when I would go home, at least 10 different sprays on me. And I'd constantly remind them, it's gonna be different on me than it is on you. And they would be like, I don't care. <laughs> But it was really fun to tell people the history behind fragrance houses like Creed or talk to them about Chanel or a lot of other niche houses or, you know, like this really inexpensive one is amazing. It's performed so much better than this and really get people excited about fragrance. It really just made me so happy and that was my favorite part of the job. My other favorite part of the job wasn't helping other people find their fragrances, it was but to help people find gifts. I don't know why, but I love that. I always loved helping, you know, a guy find a gift for like his wife on their wedding day. We did that one time. Um, and it was great, and it was a bottle of Creed, and I forget what it was. Um, or helping someone, you know, they wanted to get, a, a bride wanted to get bridesmaids gifts, and she's like, this is this personality, this is this personality, this is this personality, and we spent like two hours picking out fragrances um, for her bridesmaids. Or, you know, like a father wanted to buy his son his first cologne. You know, like it was, that was so much fun. And this is also around the time where, you know, growing up, like it was a very conservative area. 
um, but there was also a lot of just people like breaking norms and again you know there's this has been going on forever but to me fragrance has always been genderless and it's always been unisex it's just how it's marketed um, so we have the female fragrance marketed and then the male fragrance marketed and then like the the niche expensive luxury was kind of more of the unisex area and we just had these two people that I just remember and I just love this about working here. It's just like completely shattering norms at the time in the area. Because again, this is a very rich, conservative area. Um, and then we had David who worked there, who is a queen and he was wonderful. Um, and there's just like this very like older, distinguished woman. And she loved to smell like, I think, oh my gosh, it was a Gucci fragrance for men at the time. I don't remember. But she's like she would only buy male fragrances and it was like she would had a lot of money she'd buy a new fragrance kind of like you know fragrance collectors like one a week practically she'd come in and she'd want to try something new and we had so many fragrances and we had so many new things coming in that this was a great place for her to come and get her perfumes um and she would only buy male fragrances and everyone would be like oh your husband's lucky and i'd be like oh she's wearing that now and it was just really interesting to see this very distinguished older woman and it was my first taste of women gravitating towards male fragrances i'd seen a lot of men gravitate towards women fragrances way more than women gravitate towards men and I was just really just kind of intrigued by this and I loved it um, and then we have the other gentleman that came in and he bathed in YSL baby doll which is a very sweet it's like light blue only it's a lot sweeter and young I would say it's almost juvenile in some way but I really like it and he wore that every day it was his signature he'd come in once a month and buy a new bottle and it smelled so good on him you guys it was so good and I just loved that I loved seeing what people wore I love seeing what people got as gifts I love seeing what people got excited over and I really loved helping people like discover new fragrances and new scents and it was just so much fun and I loved that job minus one day everything else about that job was great but it was really interesting for me it was kind of a wake-up call it was my first job I had never dealt with anyone like Wendy before and understand there's a lot I'm not saying a lot of interactions her and I had um, where I was in tears where I might have done something wrong but I mean, I'm telling you the things that happened, but again, like I said, disclaimer-wise, I was 16. They, they're, everyone else might have been really nice and cutting me a lot of slack, and she was like, I'm not cutting her any slack, I'm going to treat her like I treat anyone else. So I'm not saying Wendy was in the wrong, even though there were cases where she was blatantly in the wrong. Blatantly. Like, we weren't allowed to call our boyfriends at work or, you know, make personal calls and she would be on the phone with her boyfriend for like an hour when the store was empty and I would just clean the desk and I would just be sitting there like, like doing homework and she's like, you need to be cleaning. You can't be sitting around. And I'm like, you're on the phone with your boyfriend. And she's like, do it now. And I knew that if she went back there and talked to my manager, even though I just cleaned, she would take Wendy's side and not mine. So it was, it was that kind of stuff was unacceptable. But again, I don't know because I was 16. I could have definitely not been the great employee that I thought I was, but overall the job was stupendous, especially for helping me build my fragrance wardrobe, um, helping me have a genuine uh, knowledge as best as I can. I never pronounce things right, ever. I'm bad at pronouncing anything that is not dummy dummy English. When I say dummy dummy, I mean like I am not articulate when it comes down to pronouncing anything that is not an English word. And I'm working on it, guys. I really am. But I, even then, I was really bad at pronunciation. Um, but it developed my knowledge of different fragrance houses. It developed my nose. It developed my taste in perfumes. It definitely changed when I worked there. And again, my wardrobe went from Clinique Happy and Elizabeth Arden to after about eight months, I think I had about 20 or 30 bottles um, just were given. Now, most of those bottles I used through. Most of those bottles um, were stolen from me. I don't know if you guys want that story. It was tell you right now I was moving I had them when I was out of high school and I was moving from one apartment to another and movers kind of lost like a third of me and my friends boxes I don't know where they went when they were put on the truck and taken off the truck 
but they were gone and a good portion of that was my makeup and perfume I don't know why but whatever um, and that's when I learned to take better care of my things and not trust movers um, anyway um, but I really developed a passion for this um, and that's why I was really excited to um, work in the mall when I worked in the mall because on my lunch breaks I would actually go to Sephora or go to the fragrance counter at Neiman Marcus or Saks or wherever it was and I would just spend my like lunch hours like just sniffing perfumes and talking with the fragrance pe uh, the people at the fragrance counters and the essays and it was always so much fun and I loved it I loved it and I miss I miss working and with fragrance and I think that's why I really wanted this YouTube channel to be primarily fragrance even though I do still have a passion for skincare and I'm going to be doing that more on my channel again that's going to be a weekend thing um, so it's going to be like weekends are going to be skincare and the week is going to be fragrance but I just I love this guys it really is and I missed it and I'm so glad that I'm able to review things with you and share things with you and that you guys ask me questions and give me recommendations your recommendations are amazing I think that's my favorite thing um, because I miss that and it's been 16 17 years and I still miss it so um, that's my little kind of fragrance story time talking about my time at the perfume store I have a few things I'm not saying because there are more experiences that I think would be better at different times kind of like my Q&A with the, the lady that kept asking questions um, so I'm keeping some things because I might want to do a second story time where I go more in depth to other things that happened. But again, like it was really interesting to see how people spent their money. It was really fun to help people experience fragrances. And even though there was that one employee that just rubbed me the wrong way, generally overall, it was a really, really absolutely amazing first job. And I was really happy that that was it. I loved it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'm sorry if it ran a little bit long, but I've been wanting to talk to you guys about this for a while. Again, I'll probably do a second video in the future where I go more in depth for other things that happened. But this is just kind of like a general, the good and the bad of what it was like for me working in the industry. Because you guys hear me talking about it a lot. I don't know if there's any more Douglas Cosmetics in the States. I don't know if that one is even still open. Um, which is why whenever I talk about this place, I usually just say I worked at the perfume store, the cosmetic store, because it's not like I worked at Sephora and people instantly know what Sephora is. Douglas is kind of like, in the States, it's kind of like a secret, but like if you go in Europe, it's a lot more predominant. <laughs> um, so anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you guys like my more talky story time of vloggy videos, remember to give this video a thumbs up. Let me know to continue doing videos like this and also don't forget to subscribe because it's free and I'm free. I put out new videos every Monday through Friday and sometimes on the weekends as well. So I'll always have something for you to watch. In any case, I hope you guys are all happy and healthy and have a great day, month, year, whatever. And I'll see you next time.